Moby Dick. Finally, we reached the end of the Moby Dick series by Herman Melville. We've split this up into 35 chapters, minus the last one. So let's just get on talking about everything else right now in one full video. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. So I will be splitting this into five parts for the plot. The beginning, the ups, Moby's triumph, and Ishmael only. And of course, we cannot forget the end, aka the epilogue. So let's get started. One thing I really want to point out here is about the beginning. It starts with these few lines. And these will be probably the most famous lines of chapter one. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind how long precisely, having little or no in money in my purse, and nothing particular to interest me on shore, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. And that is exactly how the famous Moby Dick starts with its most famous lines. Call me Ishmael. That's kind of his trademark. That's kind of Ishmael's trademark by now. So one thing I really do want to talk about here right now is mainly everything that I have talked about in general for the past few episodes. Okay, what is the past few episodes anyway? I've talked about chapters 135, chapter 36 to 70, chapter 71 to 105, 106 to the epilogue. So if I reach here, you probably all know the plot already. So go watch those for the plot and a little analysis of each of those chapters in general. Then we'll skip everything else until, until the end. At the end, there is one of the most notable things that I would love to talk about. Ishmael being the only survivor. Now, what does this imply? It implies that, of course, back then, whaling was a dangerous business. So you probably needed an, at least an amulet or a good luck charm with you for at least a little smidget of good hope and no death on your journey. At least no injuries. By whales. <sighs> Another thing I would like to point out here is that this whole book takes over one year. The plot is over one year. And and, and this book, the Penguin Classic version, there is even a map drawn of the whole cruise of the Pequod. They start in America and then they sail all the way through islands to island island hopping, minus the war part, until they actually get to the place where they get sunk. By, the Moby Dick, by Moby Dick, right near F Fanning Island. If they were actually right closer, they could have actually gotten there and became one of the most, became one, they at least survived, at least go to the nearest island and restock. If you remember from our previous videos, you'll remember that at the end, uh, which I nicknamed the chase chapters, chase what? The chase, for the day, the chase, second day, the chase, third day, 133 to 135 chapters, that was all about everything of the battle, three rounds of battles between Ahab's crew and Moby Dick. And as you may recall here, Moby Dick isn't really a real character. So what really happens here, I'm not really sure. For one thing, I mean, if I go deeply on this, Ishmael could be... Let's go with this into whaling terms. So what would happen if this was in whaling terms? First of all, let this, let's just say it's 18th century whaling because this was written in the... This was written like the 1800s whaling because this was written in the 19th century anyway. So let's get on with it. Here, there is a lot of things. Uh, Ishmael could be the lone person who does not and is the criticizer of the whaling industry. The second part is that of the actual thing that really happens for a long time. Another one of the major conflicts that really happens during Moby Dick. Ahab would be the guy who doesn't care 
he just looks straight ahead, look for a call, like, that is useless, even if it is a bit useful for profit. That is useless, even if it is a bit useful for repairing the ship. That is useless. Everything is useless, it's more, less important than just getting that whale. And that is my high priority number one in the Eisenhower Matrix. Never heard of the Eisenhower Matrix? Go Google it. But other than that, there's much more to really just go on and talk about other than just going lame and lame and like, yeah. Ooh. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Walter Guy. So, what really does happen here? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, here you go, Walter Guy. Great. So, what does happen? Moby Dick really pretty much just does a lot of things that doesn't really happen here if we put this into the perspective of Ahab Moby Dick instead of the perspective of Ishmael what would it even look like like it would be more of revenge and ignores everything else and like calls Gabrielle a loony do a loony too got character basically if Looney Tune existed back then. At least he would probably call Gabriel Looney. And what if we put the story into other people's perspectives too? Like Queequeg or uh Starbuck or Stub or um I don't know Cap I don't know, uh this carpenter. What would it have been like from the chronological order of those guys we're on chapter one, at least from the time when chapter one started. What would it have been like? I'm not sure. But if there was, it would never have had an epilogue because at least chapter 105 would end early. Because they all died at that point. So I'm pretty sure that's the reason why Ishmael was chosen for the job. At least there is one thing more particular that I have one great question. Since the whaling industry is basically everything but forgotten, what would this be like in terms of the modern century? What would it be like to describe the modern century, one of the modern century that is similar to the whaling industry, at least more modern, and would have probably have a good story like Moby Dick? in more terms of the 21st century. Well, my first thought went to the atomic bomb. For one thing, it's dangerous. Like whaling, it was dangerous, unless you're a professional. But if you're still a professional, you're still, like, it's, you're still in danger. Look at Captain Ahab, he lost his foot for heavens, his leg for heaven's sake. And second of all, not many people, not many people are really skilled enough to do it. So if you really want to be a whaler, then you have to be skilled in it. And most, and not many people are skilled in atomic bombs, Really, not the average person is skilled in atomic bombs at all. But I kind of think it still counts because only people who are professionals at it are allowed. Or, like, just people who understand enough to pass the test for, I don't know, if there is a test for the admittance of helping making atomic bombs. Nowadays, it's kind of illegal to do all that. But if it was, like, the Cold War, then it wouldn't have been illegal at all. Unless you are the... Uh, it would have been illegal... It would still have been illegal at all. Unless you're the United States and the USSR and other countries who have somehow been able to create nuclear weapons. Another thing is that this industry could be profitable. You can sell secrets at a profitable price to countries. And eventually you run out of p countries to sell the secrets to. Because by the time you actually sell secrets to everyone, you'd be sold secrets to everyone. And you have no more people to sell secrets to. Unless other some other or alien organization that's too very, very, very dumb to colonize the Earth is here. But that probably won't really happen at all. What happens next then? Well, you can also supply people with the materials they need to make the atomic bomb. I mean, this has happened accidentally many times. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt gave his atoms for peace speech, India has been able to make the atomic bomb through asking materials for making a nuclear plant. And I'm pretty sure they tried to make one, but instead they made the atomic bomb instead. And this actually makes the atoms for peace program look a bit bad, so I'm not sure that's really good program. At least it failed me. Mm. And it's kind of dangerous. And also it hurts somebody. It hurts the people. As whaling hurts the whales. 
But what do you think? What do you think Moby Dick will contrast to in the 21st century, or the 20th century for that matter? Answer in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Sean Han out. Peace.